Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman, at your service. How you all doing? You know, I've said to you in the past that sometimes I wake up in a pure Pliskin state of mind, and today is no exception. I lost an eye last night at the Christmas do. Mm-hmm. I lost a lot of things at the Christmas do last night. I.e., I didn't find any of my friends because I arrived late, uh, and I have forgotten about nine hours of partying completely. So that was good, wasn't it? Roll on next time! <laughs> Shit. Folks, do you ever write lists? Lists of things. And then do you like add little things that you've done and add it onto the list so you can cross it off? Well, if you'd ask me, Kiltman, do you write lists? I'd have gone, no, do a fuck. Well, apparently I do. Because um, what, I, what I've realised is when I'm sitting in the pub sometimes, a whiskey, you know, on a high pedestal, crossing and uncrossing my legs, basic instinct style. I'm writing little lists of what I'm going to do on these videos and I was, you know, perusing my list which I'd done quite some time ago. I add things, I take them off, I add things. That's the beauty of doing it on your phone. You haven't got to cross, cross it out. You can just add it on, put a little star next to it when you've done it or just delete it completely. And I noticed I'd done quite a while ago a little, a little entry about a video about actor, stuntman, Dick Warlock. And I never got around to doing it. Anyway, anyway, what's prompted this and this Snake Plissken regalia? And we have the life clock on, one of the best props ever. And let's just see how long I've got left. I've got 22 hours, 52 minutes and 48, 47, 46 seconds left. Enough time for this video and a few more. But, um, so yeah, what prompted this is the fact that the Dark Side magazine, which is a UK publication, uh, which is brilliant, I've got it for many years. Here it is. The latest one has, where is it now? Halloween 2 Michael Myers interview. Who is it they're talking about? They're talking about actor stuntman Dick Warlock. <laughs> Bastards, they beat me to it. Mind you, they, def they definitely beat me to it because they got a, an interview with the big man himself. All I can do is just talk about him. But uh, so I thought, oh shit, I meant to do this, didn't I? So now I will. Actor stuntman Dick Warlock. <laughs> he is Kurt Russell's, or he was Kurt Russell's go to stuntman. The two were buddies, the two met together working for Walt Disney, and got on so well that Kurt Russell's dad actually made it a contractual obligation that whenever Kurt was hired for the movie, they'd have to take Dick Warlock with them as well, as his stuntman, as his double. He looks nothing like Kurt Russell, and he, he's not the kind of guy you'd expect to see as a stuntman. He's in a lot of John Carpenter movies. Most notably, you see him on screen a lot in Halloween 3, Seeds of the Witch, where he plays one of the android, well, he plays several different android um, killers, the hitmen that, um, oh, what's his name? Dan O'Hare, he has um, Colonel Cochran, who, who's the, the, who is actually a warlock in California, making these horrendous masks which are gonna destroy the kids of America and possibly the world. And um, it's not easy wearing an eye patch, you know. He moves around a bit. And uh, but you see him a lot on screen, and he does not look like a stuntman. He's quite small and unassuming. He's, he had very sort of graying hair even from an early age, and uh, he just looks like a businessman, which is perfect for the role because they all wear these suits and they just walk very immaculately, like they are businessmen, but they are also robotic assassins. And he, he gouges the guy's eyes out. <laughs> oh. He also tears a guy's head off at one stage, but with a completely emotionless face. He's brilliant. So he acted, well, he, he acted for John Carpenter and stood in for Kurt Russell on Escape from New York, uh, on The Thing, on Big Trouble in Little China. He also, he's worked on pretty much every um, Kurt Russell movie up until Tango and Cash, where, and then after that, because in his own words, in that magazine there, Dick Warlock then got a bit too fat to play the, to, he, couldn't, he couldn't stand in for Kurt Russell, who remained ruggedly physical and in shape most of his life so but he's great you know and I first read about him in Fangoria magazine god I was only a kid and I thought there was a great picture which is in that magazine as well but I'm not going to show you because you know I don't think I'm allowed to do that sort of thing am I um, but there's a great picture of him standing next to Kurt Russell and he's got like a wig on a scratchy wig Kurt Russell's hair looks terrible as well and it's the it's obviously when they be filming this, the actual escape moment where Kurt's gone, where Snake Plissken has gone over the wall 
with the president and you know though and he comes down on the other side on the winch but the winch breaks he's already got had a, an arrow in his leg he's been battered and chased and beaten and all sorts so he's battered and bruised and he drops down and then you see him get up and he, he's like he's limping oh he's only got seconds left to live before his head gets blown apart and um but the guy coming down in all the state prison regalia is dick warlock dick warlock drops behind there's a parked jeep there kurt russell is hiding behind the jeep Dick Warlock drops and Kurt Russell gets up and limps off. And it's it's called a Texas switch. And it's it's utterly convincing, completely convincing. So simple, yet yeah, brilliantly done. Dick Warlock also worked on rollerball. Uh, he wasn't the go-to guy for it, but he was a jobbing stuntman. You know, he could throw himself around a bit. And they weren't gonna take him, but the producer said, they know I like the way this guy skates. So they took him over to Germany where they were filming for nine weeks. And uh, he got knocked out cold. Another skater flipped him and he landed on his head and was out cold for three days. Three days! He knackered his hip and all sorts of stuff like But But um, yeah, he's a rough and tumble kind of guy and he does not look at all like that. So he stood in for Kurt on um, the thing as well. I'm just trying to think what stunt that would be. And I can really only think of one particular stunt and that's at the end, you know, where he's got the dynamite and the big Blair monster comes out of the ground. And Kurt like does a, a flip and then out of the way of its tentacles and the, the writhing dog thing which comes out of it and he chucks the dynamite. Yeah, fuck you too, you know? So I think that that big flip that he does there, which seems a bit a bit too OTT and acrobatic for McCready to, you know, to be doing. Why would you do that? You could just run. It does this no, anyway. But that's gotta be Dick Warlock doing that. But he's in so many other movies as well. I mean he's, he's acted as stunt coordinator as well on a lot of movies. And uh He's great. He even worked with David Cronenberg on The Dead Zone, just arranging stunts. He wasn't a stuntman on it, he just arranged the stunts and you know made sure they were going to work okay, like a high fall, which I think is in The Dead Zone. But you see, fabulous, fabulous uh, guy that doesn't get the praise he deserves. You know, it's always the, the stuntman who does all the stuff. You know, what was his name? Ah, oh, Lee Majors played the fall guy, didn't he? What the shit that was. But great at the time, like, I loved it when I was a kid. You know, I loved that girl Jodie, oh my god. That that shot during the opening titles where she walks through the saloon doors wearing just a bikini. <laughs> Mum, that girl just walked through there wearing only a bikini and I feel really funny. What does that mean? Ask your dad. <laughs> but um, I didn't need to ask my dad. I knew what was going on. But uh, yeah, so. That was about you know, a jobbing stuntman. But of course, the way that Lee Majors portrayed him, you know, he was also a detective hero as well. And he did every every stunt going, all the most famous stunts in Hollywood, he'd done them. And he, he was on first name terms with all the big stars. Bullshit! <laughs> Quentin Tarantino uh, made Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is his, what is it, it's his ninth movie? The ninth film from Tarantino? I don't know. I like some Tarantino stuff. And Tarantino's worked with um, Kurt Russell a couple of times, hasn't he? Well, DiCaprio plays the actor, Brad Pitt plays his stunt double, living this fantastic lifestyle in late, late 60s, early 70s, um, Hollywood. Now, in that magazine there, which I just showed you, he they asked Dick Warlock, do you reckon that stuntman relationship between you know Brad Pitt and um, DiCaprio is based on you and Kurt Russell, and he, do, he doesn't reckon so. But I think it must be in a way because Tarantino knows his movies, knows his B movies, his, his cult action movies, you know, and he certainly knows Kurt Russell. So I think there's got to be shades of that there. I mean, I don't know if that is the story behind, you know, the end, the, the, the genesis of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Then please let me know, Quentin, if you're watching, let me know, Dick, <laughs> if you're watching, get in touch as well. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure how old the guy is now, but he's got to be getting on a bit. And um, but he came across as very, very, you know, superb in that interview. So I recommend that magazine. He also portrayed what many, many would argue is perhaps the best portrayal of Michael Myers in Halloween 2, the hospital set version. Now, I don't know. Nick Castle portrayed Michael Myers in the original Halloween, and here the way he moved his look, the way he came out of the shadows, there, was a, there is a Nick Castle look to Michael Myers, and people try to emulate that. 
Dick Warlock didn't quite do that. He didn't emulate Nick Castle at all. The mask, which you can see here, here is the Trick or Treats um, mask from Halloween 2. Now, I've, I've, disco I've discovered... I discovered this before, halfway down the hall, because why its hair's all ratty. The fucking dog, Roxy the Wonder Dog, had dragged it off and ran away with it. And I was like, she never nicks my stuff normally. But she took this, and I thought, shit! <laughs> Give that back. Um, Nick Castle wore the original mask in 1978's Halloween. Do stop me if I've said this before. Oh, you can't, can you? So I'll just carry on. And... Um, the same mask, several years later, was then worn by Dick Warlock, but Dick Warlock's face is a different shape. Nick Castle's got a long horse, horse head of the face, whereas Dick Warlock's a little bit sort of squatter, fatter, rounder. Sorry, Nick. And uh, so the, the face, the mask fills out a bit more, plus it had been lying under producer Deborah Hill's bed. She was a chain smoker um, for a couple of years. So it got a bit tatty, a bit worn, it's discoloured. Plus, as you can see here, because the mask didn't fit Dick Warlock's face that well, he kept having to, you know, lift it up to, so he could breathe. So the mouth, the nose became dirty and smudged. And the paintwork, the paint job, which turned the William Shatner mask, the Don Post William Shatner mask, into the, the shape's ghost face, became worn away. So the flesh colour from underneath began to show through. So in that movie, you really do see a lot of diff different discoloration plus a lot more bruising because uh, he obviously Dick Warlock does the stunts as well you know if Michael Myers is get tipped by a car Michael Myers gets thrown off a balcony Michael Myers falls down walks through a plate glass door whatever happens to Michael Myers you can bet that Dick Warlock was the guy in the fucking suit at the time taking the hits there you go uh, so what became famous as the uh, the T as a T-shaped sort of damage on the forehead there now the trick or treats mask didn't have that on. I added that myself. I added a lot more damage to this. I, I bruised it up a bit more, SB put a few more contours on it, a bit more shading. American Lieutenant Special There's Forces Unit Black Lee, the great Lee Van Cleef, two purple hearts, and a as Peace idea. Commissioner Bob Howe, the head of YouTube Pliskin. Now, so that's in honor of Dick Warlock. But Dick Warlock did portray Michael Myers in a different way. He walked a lot more slowly. Uh, very, very famously walking down the steps, the stairs in the hospital where Jamie Lee Curtis, Laurie Strode has done a runner and he's coming down the stairs very, very slowly. It's almost an exaggeration. It's kind of a cliche that the monster walk doesn't have to run because, you know, he's going to catch you anyway. You're going to box yourself into a corner and he's going to get you. Plus, in movies, killers tend to teleport themselves. The heroine is hidden behind this, this wardrobe. He was six miles behind just when she took, she just got there. And he's right there! How the fuck did he do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is what it is. The only times, you know, Jason Voorhees in... You only had Jason Voorhees as a, a killer from Hall from Halloween, from Friday the 13th Part 2 onwards. Um, forget about his, his, his shock you know, arrival as the, the ghost child from the lake at the end of the original Friday the 13th. But in Halloween... Uh, kill the man you're getting, your slashes all mixed up, aren't you? Must be the hangover. And um, you flew the golf from Friday 13th Part 2 onwards, it no is uh, Michael... Oh, I guess I go in one way or the other. The shoot from the hip, seat of the kilt, you know, sort of style of, of my delivery. It's coming a cropper this morning, I can tell you. <laughs> the Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 2 onwards. Uh, he actually runs in Part 2 and 3. He runs quite, he speeds after his victims, well, the, the final girl, the last girl scenario. He, he fucking runs after, from that point onwards, from like, I think four onwards, he doesn't bother running, because he knows I'm going to get you. And some, what, whatever elaborate special effect makeup I'm, I'm going to do to you, it'll get cut out by the air, the, the sensors, because that happened all the time. But I, I like the fact that he runs in, in those two movies. And I'm going to cover them at some point. I keep promising this. They're on my list as well. Friday the 13th, part two and three. And the, the, the generic changes to uh, our Jace, I think I wrote. <laughs> Meaning the masks primarily. But, um, so yeah, Dick Warlock. Unsung hero. But Kiltman gives you his praise. 
is adoration and uh, undying, you know, um, awe, because you've been in some of my favourite movies, albeit sort of hidden away. And I think John Carpenter uses stuntmen really well, you know. He's not the greatest action director. Please, you know, don't don't shout at me because he's not. He makes horror movies. Sometimes he has action in his movies, but then he's not known for it, for making an action film. His most bombastic action movie is, of course, Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, the one I'm going to cover extensively soon, uh, as I keep saying. <laughs> and that is a wonderful action movie, but it's the only real time that Carpenter employs a hell of a lot of stuntmen. Hugely complex and elaborate you know, set pieces where action and fighting is the huge thing. Escape from New York is a thriller. It has a little bit of action, but not a great deal. And in that interview with, uh, with Dick Warlock, you'd think maybe during the, the fight that Snake Plissken has with, uh, with Ox, or Slag, sorry, the, his real name was Ox, Ox Baker, the big pro wrestler, and they're fighting with baseball bats and then spiked bats with bin lids as shields. You'd think maybe Dick Wallach might be incorporated into that sequence. He's not. King Kurt does all that sequence himself. King Kurt did a lot of stunts himself. A lot of climbing, running, jumping. But obviously the more dangerous stuff went straight to, uh, to his mate Dick. And um, and you'd never know. Like that Texas switch that I described before. That was fantastic. So well done. And it's so simple. So simple. A lot of the cinematic tricks are the most, you know, the ones that look the most complex and look that are the most effective, are the most simple to actually coordinate and design. So, you know, and there, that's, a, that's a glaring, fantastic example. It's very hard to... See, I look at myself in this, I can see myself. I'm always going, yay, 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 all that kind of shit. But when you've got an eye patch on, it's throwing everything else. I know Kurt Russell said that his sense of depth perception completely went when he was making the two escape movies. And he couldn't, you know, even though you've got one perfectly good eye, it's almost like you can't see because you lose that sense of spatial awareness. You haven't got it at all. I suppose after the time you can probably get used to it, but my God. To all my one-eyed friends out there, you know, <laughs> and actually there are a few, um, Oh, my heart goes out to you because this is not easy. This is not easy to do. Even just sitting here and talking to that, I'm losing a lot, which is probably why I'm stuttering and stammering a lot as well. I don't get that, but it's crazy. I'll make. I'll add that to my list. Eye patch discrepancies. You know what things to look out for with your one good eye. <laughs> so, folks. Oh, lest I forget. Hmm. And this, of course, is the soundtrack to Escape from New York. John Carmen is, you know, phenomenal but trend booking score, pure synth score. Let's get on to my favourite bit, which you've heard before, but I always do it. Oh, I always do it, always do it, always do it. The Duke arrives. Isaac Hayes is the Duke of New York. Chandeliers on the front of his caddy. Hydraulic suspensions as, as the vehicles lower themselves so they can get out. See now, I've got the sound bar above there, and because of this lack of depth perception, I almost punched it down the back. Dodgy. So it just shows you Kurt Russell and Dick Warlock, who obviously wore the eye patch as well, you know. You've got to take your hat off to them. That's some phenomenal feat. Just walking through the, the burnt out blocks that they used to stand in for New York in uh, St. Louis, which is suffered a major fire, and it looked like Dresden, as they said, during the Blitz. Kurt Russell having to walk through all the wreckage and the streets and the set dressing, going up on pavements. God, I'm going to go arse over tit, you know. Speaking of arse over tit, it is still blowing one hell of a savage, ruthless storm out there. It's not raining at the moment, but, you know, it's in the air. But I went out before, and I, I swear to God, the wind should hit you from one direction, should it not? You know, weather people out there, geophysicists, whatever you are, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the wind shouldn't hit you from every direction at once, should it? Even directions you've never dreamt could, could possibly be. I literally went like Mary Poppins. I went, I spiraled and lifted off the ground. 
which was fun in a kilt, I can tell you. Kilt man's Marilyn Monroe moment. But fucking hell, it was like the wind just all assailed me from every single conceivable side and direction. And I literally went up, whoa, like that. Jesus, it's fun, can't wait to go out again. <laughs> Try that with a few whiskeys inside me. Try that with a fucking eye patch on. Jesus Christ, I'll end up in fucking Nantucket. Anyway, folks, this was meant to be a little tribute to actor, actor, stuntman, Dick Warlock. It is, overall, it is. Five for this guy. Gave you a few little anecdotes there. Um, and go watch his movies. And there are plenty of them. Plenty of them. He's been in a lot of a lot of stuff, like, and, uh, and certainly helped out and designed the effects work, the stunt work for many motion pictures. And as I say, for some people, he is the definitive Michael Myers. I, I don't know. As a kid, I always... I'm going to watch a Halloween film. I would put on Halloween 2. Halloween, the first one, is obviously the best. And it's the most iconic uh, you're ever going to see of Michael Myers looming out of the shadows. Halloween 2 has a different vibe to it. It's more colourful. The camera work is a little bit more elaborate, Dean Cundy again. And the slow-moving Michael Myers is also a bit more savage. When you see him do some kills, When you see him do some of the kills, especially, you know, the girl at the start, he's been, I shot him six times! He's not human! And he, he's, he's going through all the backyards, and he takes the butcher knife from the L rods, and like the girl's on the phone talking to her friend, what, that's just down the street? Oh wait, I can hear the sirens. And then something falls off, like, it's obviously Michael, Michael's in the house. Michael is in the hizzy! And she goes into the room, like, and he, he suddenly springs up and goes, whoosh, with the knife. And blood just go, not, not a very gory kill, but you see some blood go whoosh, across her face. You look at that sequence again, look at his face. There's a, a, an evil glee in that eye. Well, in, in that eye, in both eyes. <laughs> You're not getting me. Doesn't wear an eye patch in Halloween. Fucking mask. But um, you look at his eyes. There's a, Nick Castle didn't do that. There was no, he was pale, blank, emotionless face. And the blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Well, that's what he had. But in Halloween 2, Dick, Dick didn't get the memo. And not, Dick walks slowly, but he's more aggressive as well. He's actually a fucking, he is a genuine monster. And you see homicidal rage in his eyes. Now, some purists might not like that aspect, but I do. I think it works. He actually frightens me even more because of that. Anyway, folks, there you go. This was a rambling, a rambling, hungover lead, uh, stuttering, stammering mess of a video. <laughs> but you should get used to these because, you know, when I've been out the night before, I really haven't got a clue what's going to come out my mouth. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime and in between time, gather up your presidents, climb over the wall and escape from whatever city you happen to be in. Wear eye patches, wear them well. Aye, Jim lad, aye. <laughs> and I'm going to see you all with two eyes next time. <gasps> Shot him six times! Six times! He's not human!